Michigan's governor race was thought to be a big win for the Democrats on Election Day. But things have just shifted drastically in the past two weeks. Joining us now at the big screen is Church Milton's own Michael Voris to talk about the potential fall of Democrat incumbent Gretchen Whitmer. That's right, James. Republican Trump and Dorsey Tudor Dixon is surging in the polls and old Gretch, she may be getting a little nervous. All that and more next. And welcome to The Daily Beat. I'm your host, Michael Voris. A quick reminder, we're going to be answering your questions live a little bit later in The Daily Beat as our hosts are checking those chats. So fill them up with questions, guys. Also, we'll be checking in on today's social media beats a little bit later. But first, Democrat darling Gretchen Whitmer, there she is in all her glory, called both Whitmer and Whitler, as in Hitler, uh, by her opponents, is perhaps the most Biden-like governor in the country. She's also loved by the Biden camp that she was strongly considered for the Veep pick back in 2020. But, you know, Gretch was the wrong skin color, so they went with Kamala Harris instead. For a long time now here in Michigan, things are looking good for her, even great, unbeatable even. Back in May, look at these numbers here. Whitmer was leading Dixon by 37 points. They hadn't had the Republican primary yet, but still, that's a walloping. The Detroit News had Whitmer up 18 points at just the end of last month and just last week. Detroit Free Press had her only up by 11 points. But now, her Trump-endorsed pro-life opponent, Tudor Dixon, is surging like so many other Republicans around the country. And we do mean surging. Take a look at what real clear politics shows us right here. This is quite amazing when you look at this. These numbers here, all of these polls are within the last week. If you see right there, all of them, they're all done with samples of likely voters. Uh, you know, you look at these numbers here and it's the average when it's all done is uh, Whitmer by three, but one of them has her tied there, and the Steve Mitchell poll, Mitchell Research, I know Steve personally, worked with him for years, uh, has the lead cut to two. So, for the record, this new RCP average shows her lead is only a quarter of what these Detroit media polls were telling us. Why? What's the big shift? Well, much like we discussed yesterday, all we have heard from Whitmer and her cronies, and if you live here in Michigan, it's non-stop, are just campaign ads about how her opponent is pro-life. Peep this. If you take Tudor Dixon at her word when it comes to outlawing abortion, she's told us exactly who she is. Are you for the exemptions for rape and incest? I am not. You said no exception. So the question would be like a 14 year old who, let's say, is a victim of abuse by an uncle. Yeah, you, you, perfect you're saying, example. You're saying carry that. No exceptions for rape and incest, or what about health of the mother? No exception. Tudor Dixon, that's not acceptable for Michigan. Yeah, Gretch has not stopped playing those ads. She's got like eight or nine of those like, oh, she hates, you know, blah, blah, hates women. Blah, blah. Anyway, those exceptions that they're talking about, all of them add up to about 1%, 1% of all abortions. But Whitmer, Whitmer wants to kill them right up to halfway out of the womb and truthfully probably until they graduate from high school. These scare ads aren't working, Gretch, and it's now too late, praise God. 18 days left until Election Day, and here's the real clear latest projections. Now, look at this. This is truly amazing. If you look at the blue, I need to step off set here perhaps for a little bit, but if you look at the blue, the blue represents, you know, the top line is who's ahead, who's, you know, who, you know, what the big, uh, you know, what the big advantage is. These are these numbers, 15 point lead, then it starts to shrink a little bit in August. And as you move down, you move down, you move down, you get to right here, this area right here, and you see it's almost dead even. From here on out, this is October 16th, from here on out, you'll see that little bit right there is red. Why? Because they're doing the projection of all of this. And if things are continuing the trend, this says that Dixon will actually upset uh, uh, Gretchen Whitmer by 2.7 points. Now, it's a projection. Uh, but the producer for this, Joe Ender and, I were Enders and I, were going over all sorts of numbers on this earlier today, really digging down into some of these polls. And uh, it is a complete toss-up, which is 
stunning when you think about this 15-point lead she had back here just two months ago. So, you know, she is catching the red wave as well. Though Michigan's gubernatorial race is the most profound of this great red swing, it is happening as we've said all over the country. It's happening in Nevada, Pennsylvania, New York, Wisconsin, Rhode Island, all of them seeing this massive momentum shift toward Republicans. We're looking at what might very well be an extinction level event for the old Democratic leadership. Let's they can pull a rabbit out of their hat by November 8th, and the odds don't look good. Does not at all. So, Mike, from an inside perspective, what happens to a like big name political like Whitmer when they hopefully lose? Well, it, look, they're generally they really go to the ash heap at that point. They they'll either, you know, if you lose, if people look at her when you lose, you get that big L loser on your head, and that's how people see you. Like you, and particularly that lead over here. I mean, you had a 15 point lead. This is what you look at like you're watching a Super Bowl and some team comes out and scores five touchdowns in the fourth quarter and wins by a field goal. You're like, whoa, do you suck? You're horrible. This is awful. So to be embarrassed like this, she'd really be kind of off the scene. You know, she'll probably get jobs in like future Democratic administrations and go to think tanks and, you know, she'll get like, uh, you know, uh, one of Jennifer Granholm. She'll be, you know, named ambassador to something or secretary of something or other. But your political career, normally speaking, is just about over. You you get beat by that, you're you're done for. All right, now we're going to shift our to our social media beat section, where everybody here in the set chimes in and has some fun with stuff that we have pulled off the web. Let's look at the first one right here. This is tremendous. I love this. I saw this earlier today. I was like, yeah, this is fantastic. The American Eagle snatching the American flag back from the grasp of the communist Nazi communist bastards, guys. That's great. There's a lot of truth behind that. We really have that uh, socialist left agenda really taking hold in America. Mm -hmm. And I really like to see the red, white, and blue be pulled back from them. I, I, I'm, I'm keeping my hopes up. Yeah, yeah Mike, uh, I, I don't know if this is uh, some sort of message or sign or whatever, but uh, the viewers don't know we were at your house, uh, I think a couple weekends ago. Yeah, we're having a big we're reporter having meeting. A meeting. And a bald eagle flew overhead and landed in your tree, and it was like it had a squirrel or something. <laughs> So, yeah, when I saw our that. Our jaws dropped. Yes. Everyone, we couldn't Everyone take our eyes off. Like, yeah, I know. We're all video. Yeah, it was yeah. Video. Very cool. I've Great. never seen a bald eagle here in the United, in the United States, in uh, in Michigan. Yeah. Big, huge, <laughs> just landed in the tree. And we're like, oh, hopefully that's a communist in your talons there. <laughs> <laughs> It was really cool, though. Yeah. All right, next one here. Let's go to uh, this one's Wall Street Silver. If you follow the whole Marvel thing, and the this and this is tremendous. Look, he's just look. He said he's going to get rid of 75 percent of Twitter workers. Elon Musk did. He's going to dump them, and you know, I, I think that would be fun. You know, you get a little nervous, guys, when you see everything starting to go your way. Uh, you know, the Irish have an old expression: first comes the laughter, then the tears. But uh, anyway, this would be tremendous. I was just about to say, it kind of bothers me that he's like laughing while he's like, because the because the whole thing in, in the Marvel movies is that he destroys his his arm when he uh, snaps his fingers with that thing on. So it's like I have a hard time laughing like well, maniacally while you're doing it almost coming out of left field too. I mean, he's a Chinese businessman. He made billions over in China and for him to take over Twitter, you know, there's a possibility you want to put tinfoil hat on that this isn't necessarily the best for the world. We'll uh, keep an eye on the story. Yeah, well, we certainly will. All right, let's go to another one here from our good friend here at Church Militant, Mark Fincham. Mark Fincham is running for Secretary of State in Arizona, and he is reasonably well ahead uh, of his uh, Democratic opponent there running for that, Fontes or Fonts or Fontes. Yeah, Fontes. Uh, Fincham's a great guy. Uh, he, was, he was really like within seconds after the 2020 debacle, he stood up and said, we are not going to let this happen. He has led the election integrity charge. Yeah. Very good friend of ours. Interviewed him a couple times. He was here at our call to action conference back in August. He says, watch all drop boxes, period. Save the republic. Yes, indeed. It's all about counting. And, guys, I have to say, we just had a really, really big case here in Michigan uh, ruled in the Republicans' favor for election integrity. Jocelyn Benson, the Secretary of State, had, uh, had instituted a bunch of rules that a court just today ruled are illegal uh, because she put all these things on poll watching, you're not allowed to do this, you can't get within 30 feet, and blah, 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 blah. And uh, the court said, nope, you can't do that. Yeah, Mike, I mean, you see the videos on social media of just in the dead of night, these people walking up, usually with like an Antifa mask on, <laughs> with backpacks full of ballots, and they just shove them in there. Yep. And it's just 
so yeah just there's no way to regulate that if you just put a ballot drop box out in the middle of nowhere it's like oh this is a safe safe way to vote yeah right yeah yeah it's safe all right and so it says january 6th it's almost a, you're you're labeled a domestic terrorist if you actually bring up any of these questions whatsoever but it just can't it can't go away from america they saw the the counting stop and everything and there's a lot of questions left out there yeah right? lots we sat on this stage election night yeah. 2020 going what the heck <laughs> hades is going on last one right here guys our good old guy here to the north justin trudeau update this is from him this is an official tweet from him, Justin Trudeau. You know, he's the son of uh, Fidel Castro. Uh, update, people can no <laughs> people. <laughs> I didn't really say that. But I, uh, people can no longer buy, sell, or transfer handguns within Canada, and they cannot bring newly acquired handguns into the country. I bet you feel safe in Canada, guys. You know, the big, the big pointer there with Canada, that's where we're going to be in five, ten years, almost all other things. So they're, the farthest left they're going, it's, it, we're, we're headed that direction. Well, and I'm just going to throw a little factoid out there. Um, earlier this year, I think it was during the summertime, they actually came out with a report, and it showed that 75% of all gun-related fatalities in Canada were related to suicide. They were the result of suicide. I think they have a mental health issue, not a gun issue, and I think it's probably due to Trudeau's you know, <laughs> lockdown measures and everything else, so I think maybe they should focus yeah, on that. A lot of friends in Canada, a few in particular, that, uh, you know, that it was a nightmare for them living there uh, during that whole you know Trudeau uh, craziness. Anyway, as a reminder to all of you, what you're looking at here, our Daily Beat and Evening News is free for you to watch, but it's not free for us to produce for you. We have an enormous budget here. There's a lot of people on staff. We have a lot of technology and everything else. It costs a lot of money to run Church Milton. So if you like what you see in here, you can give us a call at that number right there. If you're seeing this during off business hours, just leave your voicemail. The ladies will be happy to get back to you. Or you can just go donate to the donate link right away, churchmilitant.com forward slash FFF. That's our campaign, our months long campaign, fighting for the future. So now we're gonna take your live questions. Guys, who's first? Right here, Mike. Uh, this is actually from yesterday. We were just not able to get to it. And it just kind of made me chuckle a little bit when, when I saw it. It says, CM staff, how do you do this every day without becoming cynical or losing faith? Yeah, well, who says we don't? <laughs> I'm joking. That's a joke. <laughs> I, I tell you, probably more than anything else here, especially working in the, those of you who have seen wide shots of the studio area and everything, this is a pretty good group of people. I got to tell you that. I'm in charge, so I can say that and feel very confident in it. There's a lot of camaraderie here. There's a lot of sharing of stuff here. There's a lot of, you know, uh, you know, support and everything else. Yeah, if you're just sitting here kind of burying your face in this stuff all the time, but, you know, you've got other folks and friends and things to like bring you up and say, yep, this is exactly, this is what we're fighting. So yeah, you can get down and be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that story. But then you realize, okay, you know, we pray all the time, pray, pray three times a day, uh, morning, noon, and uh, around noon, uh, and evening prayer. Uh, it's, a, it's a very prayerful, concentrated, dedicated, committed crowd here. So yeah. it's a little hard to become cynical in the middle of all of that, although the stuff going on in the church is revolting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brad. So the... Uh, Word on the street is the retreat at sea is the life of Christ. Could you expand a little bit on that? Sure. Yeah. It's, uh, there are lots of things in scriptures that uh, uh, kind of get overlooked, uh, particularly the gospels. So we're going to be concentrating on that. A lot of things, a lot of things going on uh, in our Lord's life when he just happens to maybe walk into a village and you hear what I commonly call like a little throwaway line. There is no throwaway line in sacred scripture. It doesn't exist. Uh, and there's nothing our Lord said that is not significant. Uh, everything is. That said, some things, you know, some parables, for example, have sort of drop, dropped, or, I'm sorry, jumped to the top of, uh, you know, well-known, like the prodigal son and things like that. But what about all those other little ones that we don't really hear that much about? Like you're hearing that, oh, no, no, no. well, that's what we're doing. We're going to look at the life of Christ with, and pull out a few little gems. And listen, if you haven't signed up, we just got about 20 or, 20 or 30 signups today because uh, we did this in the Vortex. It's a great time. You get to hang around with other Catholics. We've got 130, 140 people already uh, signed up for them. We've only been advertising it for a couple of weeks. Uh, you, you know, think about it. You know, go to the site, click on it, 
fun times, uh, you know, serious times, all kinds of great camaraderie. You're talking earlier, James, about the, uh, you know, hey, how do you get over all like the cynicism and stuff? You surround yourself with good people who are in the fight. This is a great thing to do. And I got to tell you, uh, you know, I, I came over to America on a cruise ship when I was a little boy. We were, I was born in Texas, but we moved to England when I was six months old. And we came back on the SS United States. I have loved cruise ships since. I was seven when we came back here to the US. I love them, they're great, they're fun. For the, any of you who are in the northern half of the country, it is blessedly warm in the Caribbean. So, uh, and the fares are like in the basement. It's unbelievable. The cruise industry is trying to bounce back. Uh, and so, the, I mean, the fares are stupid low. Uh, so it's all Catholic, it's all warm, it doesn't cost anywhere near what it normally does. Check, check, check. Come along with us. All right, Michael, I cannot wait to hear your response to this question. A viewer asked, with a recent Pew Research poll indicating fewer people pray today, do you think God will still act on behalf of lazy, non-praying Christians? Oh my, that is a tough I guess question. Does, does God listen to our non-prayers, I guess? I don't know, if Christians have gotten, you know, they've slacked off. Yeah, we, we actually did some uh, numbers on that in uh, a recent Vortex on the, uh, the decrease in praying. Uh, you know, look, is, <laughs> God will never not hear your prayer uh, but when you're asking for something from God, depending on what it is you're asking for, uh, you know, you have to be in a state of grace. And if you're not in a state of grace, if you're not, uh, 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 you know, out of a state of mortal sin, whatever you're asking for yourself, God can't answer that for you. You need to ask, please put me back into good graces. Get me back to confession. Get me back to the sacraments. Get me back to a, you know, a, a, a life with the Holy, uh, Holy Trinity living in me. That needs to be your prayer. Uh, anything else that you're praying for, if you're not in a state of grace, is pointless. You can say, oh, give me a million dollars, and God says, okay, here's a million dollars. And you die and go to hell, because you die in a state of mortal sin. You need to be in a state of grace. That needs to be the first prayer that you make. And if you are already in a state of grace, then you need to say, please keep me in a state of grace. Pray first thing in the morning when you wake up. Pray last thing in the evening when you go to bed and very many stages in between. All right, guys, let's go to the venerable Fulton Sheen for our final beat of today and this week. Love him, love him, love him, love him. Creeds and confession of faith are no longer the fashion. No, they're not. Religious leaders have agreed not to disagree, and those beliefs for which some of our ancestors would have died, they have melted into spineless humanism. Boy, did he, I, I mean, it's, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody who had their finger on the pulse of everything going wrong in the church now, 45, 50 years ago. He nailed everything. That's it for today's show, guys. And for the week, we're gonna throw it back to you. Bring us home, guys.